In this video, we're going to be talking about CAT C9 engines. There are Huey systems and also the common rail systems. I'm going to be showing what the overheads look like, the injectors, maintenance intervals, basically if you're looking at buying or you already own one, kind of the nuts and bolts of how these engines work, and any faults they might have and things to look for. Okay, hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so I get a lot of questions on the different engines. Maybe someone's looking at buying one, and they want to know the specifics, what I think about them, what mechanics think about them, um, what are the common failure points, what are things to look for. So I figured I'd make this video. Um, this will be talking about a C9. In the future, I'll be doing them on the different CAD engines. Um, before we get into the nuts and bolts, I'd like to thank Sam for a $25 donation to the channel. If you'd like to donate, it's adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal. And on to the video. So the first thing we're going to be showing you is I'm going to be going on a walk around of a C9 engine that I have out of an RV. I'm going to be showing you where the sensor locations are. I'm going to be showing you the different components, what the overhead looks like, um, what the oil cooler looks like, and um, you know just things to look for for this engine. After that, I'm going to be talking about weak points with the engine, um, CAT's maintenance interval suggestions, and my suggestions with it, and I uh, hope you enjoy the video, okay? have a Huey System C9 here, and we're going to start at the back, and this is your fuel pressure regulator. This is your fuel pressure sensor, if it has a fuel pressure sensor. We have your CAT ECM, which controls everything on the engine. We have your wastegate solenoid and the wastegate solenoid line. We're then going to move up to the atmospheric pressure sensor, which is in the valve cover base. We then have your intake air temp sensor, which is right there. And next to it, we have your boost pressure sensor, which is right there. Moving down the engine, we have your oil pressure sensor. This is the CAT oil pressure sensor. And if you have a dash mounted oil pressure gauge, it's probably that one. We have your crankcase breather. We have your injection actuation pressure sensor. Huey pump, air compressor, power steering pump. Uh, most have power steering pumps. And between the air compressor and the Huey pump, you have your two timing sensors. The engine will run on either one but they are usually changed as a group. Um, now there are two of them. So we have your little uh, baffle for the air compressor inlet hose. We have your solenoid for your intake air heater. We have your coolant temperature sensor. Now looking at your overhead here, we have your Huey electronic unit injectors, uh, number one cylinder working its way back to number six. We have your intake and exhaust rocker arms and this is a push rod engine fairly simple overhead intake exhaust valves there are four valves per cylinder we have your push rods and they are fairly long they run all the way through the head into the block got the new engine over here you can kind of see the push rods better there they are so your intakes on the left exhaust is on the right for each cylinder moving to the front of the engine these have a, so this is your thermostat housing, two thermostats in there. Um, let's see, we have a belt-driven water pump here, which is similar to the C7s, uh, very similar. You have your dampener. And what we're looking at here is your oil filter housing, and behind it is the oil cooler. Now this port and this port are for your bypass and your pressure regulating valves for your oil filter housing, uh, your wastegate hose there, and your air compressor, or not air compressor, your exhaust manifold, turbocharger, very simple, single turbocharger setup. On the C9's S, S engines, they use a variable geometry turbo, but on these, it only use the normal turbo. Uh, this is your exhaust brake, if equipped, and that's actually not a cat part. And that is pretty much everything on the C9. So here we have a main bearing removed, thrust bearing, main bearing bolts. Uh, we're looking at a oil pump. These are gear driven oil pumps. Uh, pretty simple design on the oil pumps there. 
the wet sump setup and your oil cooler. Okay, so we kind of did a quick walk around on that C9 there. Uh, if you're having a sensor fault or something, hopefully that showed you where the sensor is and kind of what to look for. Now I'd like to talk a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of the engine itself. So C9 is a 9 liter Caterpillar. It is very similar to a C7 in that it's a Huey system. Um, it's considered medium duty by CAT, whereas their C13s and C15s are considered heavy duty. Um, the biggest difference between a C7 and a C9 is a C9 has liners. So if you lose a cylinder, unlike a C7 where you have to machine the block, kind of similar to most automotive engines, on a C9 you can replace the liner and the piston without actually removing the engine block. Um, now, what else about this engine? Well, it has a belt-driven water pump. So if you lose your belt, engine can overheat caused by that. Um, other things to look for, um, it's a push rod engine, so you know it's potential you might get a bent push rod, um, but that's it's fairly uncommon that that happens on these engines. So what's the main weak point of a C9? And I'm going to be talking mostly about the Huey system, and then I'll talk about the C9S, which they didn't make a lot of, but it's the last version of the C9 that they made. So, biggest issue that C9s typically have are the Huey system. So that is your Huey pump, and then the injectors. And what Huey is, if you haven't seen my other videos on the Huey system, you might want to watch those because I talk a lot more in depth on them, is it's hydraulic electronic unit injectors. So the engine fires the injectors electronically with a solenoid, but it builds the high pressure fuel needed for the injection process with high pressure oil. So there's a rail in the head for fuel that runs about 80 PSI, but then there's another rail in the head that runs oil pressure at very high pressures. We're talking anywhere from 800 up to 4,000 PSI. And it uses that high pressure oil to fire the injectors. And this is where the vast majority of faults with SC9 engine come from, is the Huey system. The Huey pump itself can fail, the injectors fail, not frequently, but as a fault, these are probably going to be the biggest issue if you have a C9. Um, now the biggest thing that can cause this is the pump going out and then throwing debris into your injectors and that can take out the pump and the injectors and the pump fairly expensive you're looking around depending on where you get it from fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars and the injectors are fairly expensive and they're about five to six hundred dollars a piece now you have one for each cylinder so you have six injectors um, those are the main that's the main thing the weak point of a c9 now the C9S, which if you have one of those, that's the last version the cat made of the C9 for truck applications or RV applications. Now that didn't use a Huey setup. That used a common rail setup, which is very high fuel pressure. It can get up to 30,000 PSI of fuel pressure. Now those engines, the base of the engines, pretty much the same. They are more complicated than the Huey systems though. They run the common rail, which the pump is expensive, and it goes out somewhat frequently. Um, the injectors can go out quite frequently. They also, the injectors on these tend to leak fuel sometimes. Um, kind of notice that, at least on the C7s a lot. You don't see a lot of C9Ss, but if you do have one and your engine's making oil, you'll want to check that you don't have an injector leaking. If you do, you need to get that replaced as soon as possible. Um, and then also the C9S is going to have all the emissions stuff, such as an art head. It's going to have a CGI, which is CAT's version of EGR. It's going to have a DPF. These are all components that add complexity to the engine and fail quite constantly. Uh, well, not quite constantly, but they, they will fail. An art head will fail. Um, you'll usually get one to two years out of an art head, it seems like. Um, and they're around $1,000 each. Um, that's pretty much the nuts and bolts on the C9 that you need to look out for if you're looking at one or you already own one. Now let's talk about the maintenance intervals. Okay, so CAT has their own maintenance intervals for their engines. 
and then I'm going to kind of talk about what I think what the maintenance intervals should be just from my suggestion if it was my vehicle how I would maintain it at least the engine portion so cap does each engine differently as far as their maintenance intervals on the C9 it's based on whether it's 450 horsepower or less or 450 horsepower or more but I'm gonna give it the same recommendations as it's a 450 or more horsepower so the recommendation for an oil change which will include your oil filter the engine oil it will include the fuel filters hopefully both is every 250 hours so most people don't go by hours though so if you figure 250 hours and you average 60 miles an hour that'd be 15,000 miles on the oil change intervals now the problem with that recommendation at least from my standpoint is that the Huey system which uses the engine oil to fire the injectors relies on clean engine oil and I would say 15,000 miles is a lot of mileage, especially for an RV, um, which doesn't typically get driven that much. Um, so I would probably say if you're running, a, if I had a Huey engine, I would be doing oil changes more around 7,000, maybe 7,500 miles for oil changes. Um, and like I said, the reason for that is those injectors are, and the pump are very sensitive to debris and like I said the injectors are fairly expensive now this isn't to say that you'll never have injector problems if you do your oil changes less frequently but I would say cut that recommendation down to you know from 15,000 or 250 hours do it at 7,500 miles um, that's just my personal recommendation okay now oil viscosities uh, I get a lot of questions on hey is it Rotella is it you know Delvac well cat makes their own oil or I should say cat has their own oil I don't, wouldn't necessarily say they make their own oil um, for an oil recommendation if you can just use the cat one um, you know if not they pretty much all have the same standards they have to go by if you prefer you know if you prefer Rotella or Delvac or whatever you know use that one um, now the standard viscosity is 1540 but that really varies cat has different recommendations based on where that engine is operated in that it's temperature sensitive so 1540 is basically 15 degrees Fahrenheit up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit so where I'm at in the country it doesn't usually get below 15 but it is above 100 a lot of the times so we use 1540 a lot now if you're up say in Minnesota well you could run a 10w30 diesel oil um, because that goes much further down I believe that's zero uh, degrees up to um, that's up to 104 degrees so if you're running in the southwest or the south more than you know up north maybe go with the 1540 um, if you're running in the cold a lot maybe go with the 10w30 now there's also a synthetic which is a 5w40 and that is the biggest range it's from negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit up to 122 degrees and synthetic more uniform mo molecule size um, I'd say if you want to spend the extra money on the oil you know synthetics not a bad idea and it gives you a bigger temperature range for where you're operating at now fuel filters you want to change those whenever you do your services the next big maintenance item would be your overhead so cats recommendation for overheads adjustments is every hundred thousand miles or every two thousand hours or every two years so if your engine has much less than a hundred thousand miles which most C9s are in RVs I would say every two years you're probably not gonna wear that much uh, the biggest thing for overheads is has it been moved at all anytime recently um, you know if you had a lot of engine work done 
and you got an overhead done, it's probably good to have it checked on the next engine service just to make sure nothing's loose, um, everything's set. And then, you know, if it's been four or five years, I would say it's probably a good idea, um, you know, to go and get it done, even if it hasn't reached that 100,000 mile mark. Or if you just purchase the vehicle, it's a good idea to have that overhead checked. Um, because there's not a lot of play in these overheads because these are roller mechanical uh, valve trains. So there's no hydraulic lifter to kind of soak up any, um, you know, any slop. It's strictly mechanical, so those valves need to be adjusted appropriately. Uh, the next thing's coolant. You know, I recommend ELC, which is CAT's Extended Life Coolant. Um, it says six years, 600,000 miles out of that coolant. Um, I'd say, you know, probably five years is probably a good recommendation on that. Um, I've only seen one C9 with over 600,000 miles on it, and that was on a long-haul truck. But I'd say if, if your RV's sitting a lot, you know, you don't want old coolant in there because you can start, you know, getting electrolysis in your... Um, in your cooling system, you can start getting some scaling and stuff. So if it's been over five years, I'd say change your cooling out. Um, that's pretty much all there is to say about the C9. Um, the C9 Hueys are simple, good engines. Um, you can get good power out of them without a lot of problems. The C9S, so a C9 would be a 90G usually, serial number. A C9S is the C9 S serial number and that's a regen motor those engines are a lot more complicated expect to have more check engine lights um, regen problems um, potentially fuel system problems with those the base engine though is the same so you shouldn't have really any problems with say the pistons or camshaft anything like that okay um, that's pretty much all there is to say on the C9s um, Oh, and Cat's recommendation was also on their oil changes. I just wanted to say that it's it's 250 hours or every three months. But uh, my personal recommendation is every three months on something that's not getting hardly driven at all is, is kind of excessive. Unless you have something like fuel dilution in the oil or coolant in the oil, uh, you know, any moisture that gets in that oil, when you run the engine, get it up to operating temperature, is going to steam out. Um so that's Cat's recommendation is 250 hours or every three months. Um, I would say annually or, you know, 7,500 miles. That's just my recommendation as someone that works on them. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you'd like more of these type of videos in the future, and thank you.